Hey guys, Tim here from Core Electronics, and today I'm gonna to talk about my new tutorial for the 3D printing filament from Ultimaker. There's a huge range of 3D printing materials that Ultimaker officially produces and supports, and it is important when you're designing your own particular component that you have some foresight and you figure out exactly what kind of properties you want that final component to be. Ultimaker produces 11 different kinds of filaments, officially supported, and they're the ones that we're gonna go through today. If you're interested in a particular filament material, then they'll be timestamped as we go along. So each print has its own purpose, be it strength, flexibility, chemical resistance, protection against electrostatic discharge, flame retardant qualities, aesthetics or processing speed, just to name a few. And the value gained by taking the time to pause and consider your material choice is gigantic. If we jump over here, you'll be able to see my Ultimaker 3D printer material guide. And this is on our core electronics website. So as you can see, here's a list of all the different types of material that Ultimaker produces. It is also worth noting that Ultimaker allows different third party materials to be used on their machines. Anything that it has a diameter of 2.85 millimeters or even three millimeters will work, so long as you take the time to sort out the settings of your own particular machine. However, one of the best things and the things that makes Ultimaker stand out as a company is that it's reliable. So you'll be able to plug and play and change only a couple of settings if you use one of these official materials. The other materials will work, but it's more experimental. You have to take time to actually figure out the exact details. If we jump over here, you'll be able to see the material comparison chart, which I've set up, which will talk about some of the most crucial properties in relation to 3D printing applications for each of the specific Ultimaker three millimeter filaments. So of all these properties, probably the most important to most people is the kind of colors that are available. So that takes number one spot in the column. So we've got colors, we've got tensile stress at break and uh, elongation at break and impact resistance. Some of these are more complicated values and at the bottom of this, there'll be definitions so we can go through and, ex and truly understand what all these kind of properties mean. Melting temperature and glass transition point. Melting temperature has to do more with how hot the nozzle needs to be, whereas glass transition point has to do with more of its operating temperature. So if, it's, if it has a high glass transition point, it will be able to work in high temperature environments. Melt mass flow rate, that has to do with how quickly you can print a product. The higher that is, the faster you'll be able to print it. And we also, very importantly, is whether it's a biodegradable material and whether it's insoluble to water. Jumping into it, properties and purposes of the Ultimaker materials. And as you can see, I have quite a bunch before me and some of them are wrapped up in plastic and some of them aren't. It's important to realize that a lot of these materials are hydroscopic and if you want them to function well over a long time, it's important that you keep them in an enclosed environment, one where air can't easily access them. Other materials, right in front of me I have two PLAs. PLA is slightly water absorbent, but much less than other materials. So this kind of material can hang around and it will still function as well as it was day one pulling out of the packet. Let's talk about PLA. So PLA is one of the oldest materials used in 3D printing. It's ideal for prototyping as like a prototyping 3D models which have a pleasing surface finish. It allows for a high resolution, it gives a glossy finish and can be printed at low temperatures. So these are the kind of properties that make made it so accessible back in the day to be used as a 3D printing filament. Over time, PLA will lose its mechanical properties. So it's worth noting you won't be able to produce components that last years and years and years. It will become more frail. It will become more frail as a component. Also, glass transition temperatures of PLA are quite low. So PLA is best used for low temperature applications. But if it's less than 60 degrees Celsius, it will work fine. There is many colors available for PLA. Jumping back over here, the next tier is Tough PLA. This is something that Ultimaker produces as well as another as other companies. And Tough PLA is, is, shares the same properties as PLA, except it's more sturdy, more resilient to impact resistance and just stronger in general. And it's perfect for producing prototypes that are on a larger scale. 
and also ones that need slightly higher mechanical properties. So it's worth noting PLA, as well as tough PLA, you can put in an oven after you print it. And if you get the temperature just right, the material will become basically as strong as plastic injection molding. And this is one of the best things about PLA. You can produce such high quality final prototypes just using a couple of after processing steps. Also it comes in lots of different colors. Now ABS is another one of those giants and it is the most common type of filament. And it was used all the way back in the day. And we're talking like 2011 when 3D printing became more consumer focused and able to, you're able to have your own machine in your own workshop and actually have it function and produce really great parts. So when you think of ABS, think of Lego blocks because that's what Lego is made out of. It is it's quite sturdy, but if you dock it really hard and it's thin walled, then it will break. It's also quite prone to warping. So when you print a big component, if you have two thick walls or if it's just a large component, then as it's coming along, you might find your 3D printed component will be more warped. Also ABS reacts with acetone in a way which allows you to glue different components together just by putting a little dab of acetone, talking about nail polish, just by dabbing a little bit of acetone you'll be able to stick different components together and it's also worth noting you can achieve very glossy surface finishes by doing just that. Many colours, many many colours are available in ABS. It also releases toxic fumes when you when you produce components with it so it's important that you take the time to either have some kind of exhaust system or just be in a well ventilated area. Nylon, synthetic polymer, it's one of the more established, more recent materials used in 3D printing. Components for printing tools, functional prototypes and final parts are all able to be made from nylon. Nylon has strength, high impact resistance and flexibility. However, it has a low glass transition point so it won't be good for outdoors in the sun for long periods of time or any kind of high temperature applications. It also has a strong corrosion resistance for both alkaline and organic chemicals. But worth noting, nylon is extremely hydroscopic, so you gotta keep it enclosed. You gotta keep it closed. Enclosed and use desiccants. CPE or copolymers. So copolymers are highly regarded for use in mechanical applications. It is one of the more tough, functional, dimensionally stable, and chemically inert plastics available in the market. And you can produce such good prototypes, basically final components using this. One of the good points about it is when melted is odorless and also emits very few ultra-fine particles and very few volatile organic com compounds. Furthermore, it offers a great dimensional stability, thus designs you print will be of a high accuracy of the original digital model. Many colors available, including transparent, and CPE has a great adhesion to PVA and breakaway. That means you can produce models using a drill extruder. You wouldn't be able to produce using a single extruder because you're able to, you're able to put supports in places which you just wouldn't be able to normally. We'll talk more about PVA and breakaway coming up. CPA is a copolymer as well, but it is perfect for extremely rugged and, and also for producing dimensionally stable functional prototypes. CPA is CPE plus is better than CPE mainly because of its temperature resistance and higher impact resistance. It is worthwhile employing build plate adhesion sheets to ensure a strong connection with the build plate. That's because CPE Plus likes to connect to itself, but doesn't like to connect to other things like glass. So just to make sure that your prints are reliable every time, that's what I'd recommend you do. It has low levels of UFPs and VOCs, much like CPE, and it also has a large range of colors, including grayscale, which gives you that professional look, that nice model at the end of it. Ultimaker PC polycarbonate is the perfect material to print molds, tools, tooling, and functional prototypes. Even you could even you could do even you could run short-term manufacturing cycles. This is because the material properties of PC are very strong and tough, and it also retains its dimensional stability when undergoing temperatures as high as 110 degrees C. So this model would be fantastic in high temperature scenarios. It's important to get strong connection between the layers, and to do that you have to enclose the case that it's being 3D printed in. PC filament is also incredibly hydroscopic, so you have to make sure that you're not leaving the filaments out in the air and you're using desiccants. A material which is completely different than the other materials we've been talking about before, thermoplastic polyurethane. 
This is TPU 95A. It's think of think of flexible rubber. This kind of material you could print in association with PLA or uh, maybe CPE, and you could actually create shock systems. This plastic will bend a whole bunch, whereas the PLA will be much more sturdy, able to withstand naturally high impacts without deforming or breaking, but it doesn't work very well in UV light. So you'll need to keep your final component inside. It doesn't work very well with high temperatures either. Polypropylene is an immensely popular material worldwide with engineers and manufacturers, and it's a great material to produce lightweight parts with a high strength to weight ratio and also produce smooth surface finishes. PP has exceptional fatigue resistance, so it's pretty good for use as a prototyping material for making bearings, things that have high rub, and it also has good temperature, chemical, and electrical resistance, whilst also being able to be recycled, which is very important. Hydroscopic as well, so you gotta keep it enclosed. Ultimate PVA, polyvinyl alcohol, it isn't typically used for the final component print, but it is the perfect choice as a removable support structure. And this is because PVA is water soluble. Once you've printed your final component, we'll have all of these removable support structures. And these removable support structures will be dissolved when you dunk it into water. So it means you can produce like large overhangs and intricate internal geometries. And by using warm water and regular stirring, you'll be able to quickly dissolve this PVA and produce components that you would just not be able to produce any other way. Also worth noting, PVA is immensely hydroscopic, so you also have to keep it enclosed. Ultimaker Breakaway, also known as BAM, mm, is another material which isn't typically used for final 3D printed parts because of its fragility and weaker properties, but it is an excellent choice for removable support structures. Unlike PVA, it isn't water dissolvable. You would use it in scenarios where that doesn't really matter so much, or you plastic component you're using is also water soluble, so that way you wouldn't be able to dunk it in water. It also offers a much longer shelf life than PVA and is less hydroscopic. Also worth noting on material compatibility, I would recommend viewing my Ultimaker Dual Extrusion 3D printing guide. This talks more about how different plastics and materials can work well with each other and which ones don't work so well with each other. So going back over here, there's a number of definitions that I've talked about. So if anything you haven't run into before, you'll be able to figure out very elegantly over here. And there's also technical data sheets and safety data sheets for those who want exactly specific details on each of these particular components. This is my guide on the Ultimaker 3D printing materials. I hope it's been useful. I, I haven't confused any of you. Here's a whole bunch of them, and I hope you have a really good day.